OK, everyone, we'll get, we'll get going. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Ian Tracy and I work in the employer relations team within the intro services in the Department of Social Protection. I would like to welcome you to this information webinar for the temporary clerical officer position at Fluency in English and Ukrainian. Today, my colleague from employer relations, Sinead Waters, was going to be talking to you about the temporary clerical officer opportunities available in the public sector how to register on www.publicjobs.ie and how to apply for the role. Also with us is Vitus Tamalinas, um, a TCO currently working in this department who will be talking to you about his experience. We are also joined by my colleagues Sharon Chapman and Kate Collins, who work in the activation area of the department. Just a reminder before we get going that this webinar is being recorded and you should all have your cameras turned off at this stage. As your mics are muted, we would encourage you to use the chat function to ask questions. I'd like to thank you all for joining us here today, and we are now going to kick things off with a presentation from Sinead Waters. Thanks, Ian. Uh, good morning, everyone. If you just bear with me, I'm just going to share my presentation. Sorry, just bear with me. Uh, that should be up there now. So uh, good morning again, everyone. Uh, my name is Sinead Waters, and I'm here today to talk to you about uh, the temporary clerical officer fluency in English and Ukrainian vacancy. I'm going to talk today a little bit about the TCO role, how to register on publicjobs.ie and how to apply for this position. So the duties of the uh, temporary clerical officer will vary depending on the nature of the work of the employing department. Some of your responsibilities may include greeting and registering uh, Ukrainian nationals when they first arrive at airports or ports throughout Ireland, general clerical duties including filing, photocopying, answering and making phone calls, dealing with emails or manning a reception desk. Uh, it will also include communication and translation tasks if needed as Ukrainians interact with different government departments, offices and agencies in relation to their entitlements to access different supports and accommodation if needed, as well as other state supports, including the provision of a PPS number. You will also be supporting line manager and colleagues throughout the duty of your work. You will also be working part of the a part of a team in delivering services, dealing with the public and customers, for example, responding to queries and providing them with information, the use of information technology, including word processing, spreadsheets, database, email and internet, and you also may be doing some routine accounts work. This is just a sample of some of the work you may do as a temporary clerical officer. In order to apply for this position, you need an account on publicjobs.ie. If you do not already have an account, you can register and create one. As soon as you have an account, you can then log in and apply. When you register on publicjobs.ie, you will be asked to create a username and a password. You will also be asked to choose a security question. This is in case you forget your password. You may be asked a security question before you log in again. You will also be asked to provide other, excuse me, other personal details such as your name, address, date of birth, PPS number and email address. You should ensure to provide your personal, personal email address as this is how public jobs will contact you throughout the competition. Once you have created your account on public jobs, you can then log in and apply for jobs on the platform. When you log in, you'll be brought to the candidate portal page. You then click on publicjobs.ie in the top left hand corner and you'll be brought to the public jobs homepage where you can then search for and apply for the relevant vacancy. The TCO application will ask you for details such as your location preference, your history of employment, your education, your level of English and some more. Once you have completed your TCO application, you can then view the completed application on your My Applications tab on your Public Jobs profile. You should receive an acknowledgement from Public Jobs within from sorry, you should receive an acknowledgement from Public Jobs within two working days from when you submitted your application. So I'm just going to do a step by step of the application process. Step one is to register on publicjobs.ie and as I mentioned earlier on, ensure to use your personal email address so that they can contact you throughout all stages of the recruitment process. 
step two is to click apply for the temporary clerical officer position. And please remember that the closing date for this competition is the 16th of March, which is this Thursday at 3 p.m. So please ensure to apply before that date and time. Step three is to complete the application form in full. Step four is to then view your completed application in the My Applications tab on your public jobs profile. Step five is acknowledgement. As I mentioned earlier, you should receive an acknowledgement within two working days from when you have submitted your application. And the final step is, should you meet all the eligibility criteria and there is a sufficient number of vacancies in your area, you will then be invited for interview. So if you have any difficulties with the application or registration process, you can contact Public Jobs directly. You can contact them by email at info at publicjobs.ie or by phone at 01 858 7400. So they're available to be contacted Monday to Thursday from 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and Friday from 9 a.m. to 5.15 p.m. While we hope that you are successful in this competition, if you are unsuccessful in your application due to not having enough experience or your level of English not being sufficient, you may be able to apply for our Work Placement Experience Programme, WPEP. This programme will give you the opportunity to build your work, work experience while at the same time increasing your level of English. The WPEP is a six month, 30 hour per week voluntary work experience programme. If you would like to retrain and gain experience in another type of employment, this program can help you build new skills and gain work experience. You cannot take a placement where you've are already built up experience in that se sector. Uh, participants on this program must be between aged 18 and 65 and in receipt of a qualifying payment for six months. The qualifying payments are job seekers allowance and benefit, job seekers transitional payment, disability allowance, one parent family payment and blind pension. And the minimum rate of payment for WPEP is €323 Euro per week. So if you want to apply for WPEP, you need to register on our jobsireland.ie website. And once you've registered, you can then apply for any WPEP vacancies on the website. So if you would like to get for more information on this programme, you can go to our gov.ie forward slash WPEP website or, to, or talk to your EPA employee personal advisor in your local Intrio centre. So I'd like to thank you very much for watching my uh, presentation today. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat box and we will answer them at the end of the webinar. Once again, thank you and the best of luck to you all in your application. Thank you, Sinead. That was fantastic. And it was great to hear more about the TCO competition and the WPEP. Next up, we have Reuters from the Department of Social Protection. Good morning, Reuters. Thank you for joining us today. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience applying for the TCO and working in this department? Good morning, Ian. Um, first of all, pretty to sing. Dziakoy moza uchest u nashemu vizibunari. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining our webinar. Let me introduce myself. My name is Rydis Tomalainas. I originally came to Ireland from Lithuania back in the year 2005 when I was 18 years old, and Ireland became my home since. I studied English and Russian in the secondary school in Lithuania. I had them in my baggage when coming to Ireland. When I came to Ireland, I met a Ukrainian student, and as a result, I got married to her when I was 19. Lived in Ukraine for six months, learned Ukrainian language, Good time. Studied business and first line management in National College of Ireland back in 2008 onwards, and recently 2018, Architectural Technology, Bachelor of Science in DKIT, completed GWO course in Wexford Renewables Academy as wind turbine technician last year, June 2022. And as a result, I'm working here in civil services, the Department of Social Protection, Employment Support. As soon as war started, I was looking how to help Ukrainians uh, who are fleeing the war. It started from me agreeing to help few Ukrainians who are coming to Ireland, where I went to Dublin airport to pick them up. I realized that there is a big problem with interpreters as Ukrainians had to fill out their applications in order to receive temporary protection and PPS numbers. So I assisted that same day in Dublin airport and was 
advised by the staff there to apply for TCO, TPU position on publicjobs.ie. That's exactly what I did as I was assisting Ukrainians anyways for free on my own time. I thought that I would be able to help more if I work in the department and also get paid for it. The application process, as Sinead mentioned earlier, is simple and straightforward. I submitted my application in the beginning of March last year and immediately received confirmation that my application was accepted. In June, as I received invitation for a one-on-one -on -one interview, I was given two weeks notice. I held my interview in July and within a week, I received confirmation that I have been successful and was asked if I could start on the 2nd of August, 2022 in Tundal Pinchio Center with Employment Service in the Department of Social Protection. I started work immediately. I was met by one of the managers who was very friendly and guided me through the building. They provided induction and guided me through the process of the department. All fundamental training was provided. There was incredible help and support from all my colleagues and working here since. As soon as I completed my training and introduced myself to data protection documents, I was asked to assist in the job fair event for job seekers across the Northeast region. They took place in Trida, Navan, Cavan, Monaghan, and Dundalk. It was a great experience for me as I had to deal with a large number of people in multiple languages in a short period of time. There were hundreds of people coming to these events. Since then, I have worked in a wide range of fields in the department from regular interpreting and clerical work in the office to group engagement sessions and working with customers directly assisting people with language barrier in the social welfare offices involved in different projects since I started scaling from creating multiple multilingual employment support records, record forms for TPUs that were recognized across, across Ireland to planning events for refugees with employment relations team and employment support officers. Out of many things I have been involved here since I started in August 2022, I'll give you one example as I must be cautious of time. One of the days at work, I was asked to help at the front office with a few clients of ours. There were two Ukrainian ladies, single mothers who had third degree education in law and were practicing solicitors in Ukraine. However, in Ireland, their qualifications were not recognized by law society. And at the same time, their applications for back to education allowance were denied as it was considered that they have third level education. So I listened to the story from the ladies and brought it up to my management and back to education division. The matter was discussed and as a result, resolved within two weeks. And now people coming from Ukraine who have third level qualification in law, a right to apply for back to education allowance scheme and get higher education here, change their career path if they want. And that's exactly what the ladies did as a result. The reason I gave you this example out of many others is because it shows you that even when you are working at the very bottom of the chain, your words are being listened to and op opinions valued, and you are treated with dignity and respect. I have worked in many places in a private sector since I came to Ireland, and I never came across a structure like this and never worked with such a great people. I'm talking not only about my employment support department, but also social wealth, welfare office, health service executives, and revenue. We all are in the same building. Everybody is amazing. And it's your pleasure to work with from any grade, from clerical officer to management. Now I applied for internal full-time clerical officers competition, and I have been successful. I am on the panel waiting on my full-time permanent contract. So I encourage you, don't hesitate. And if you enjoy helping people and helping your own countrymen, women, and kids, then apply for this great opportunity and not only work, but do well every single day. For devices, go to Povacimos, Udachevamusim, Slovo Ukraine. Hope to see you soon. Best of luck to you all. Glory to Ukraine. Thank you. Ian.
Thank you very much, Aisha, for talking with us today and sharing your experience. We are now going to open up the floor to questions. Uh, there may have been questions put into the to the chat uh, during the during the presentations. There have been a few questions in relation to the location of the job. Uh, these vacancies are nationwide, so when you're applying for the position, you put in the area that you are interested in working in. So so you can co cover that when you're applying for the job. OK, there's another question that I saw from earlier on the types of positions of, that are available. Well, this is a temporary clerical officer role. So as I mentioned in my presentation, uh, the type of work you'll be doing will vary. It'll be clerical work, translation work, but it will be dependent on what department or, or area of the public sector that you're assigned to. And see if there's any more questions that. In. in this case, there's a question is is big. Sorry, is business English preferred for these roles? Um, it just says on the application that fluency in English and Ukrainian is required. So I would advise you just to apply and then when you, they ask you about your level of English and public jobs, then we'll see, tell you if that's acceptable or not. Right. And there's a question about is there a possibility of part time roles? Um, again, you'd need to contact public jobs at the moment. It's been advertised for full time, but whether there's a possibility of getting a, a part time position, you'd need to check that out with public jobs directly. A couple of uh, questions have just come in there uh, just now. Um, um, how will I be contacted about a job? Now, imagine you'd, you'd have to apply first. And you apply first public... and then generally public jobs will send you an email that there's a message on your public jobs.ie profile. It's, so that's your public jobs account. So but they will, it usually will contact you by email then to let you know. And um, another question just came in there. Um, how many interviews will I have before uh, to uh, before uh, before being offered a job either way? How many how many interviews would there normally be? I'd imagine uh, to, I'd imagine uh, there would usually just be the one. Um, yeah. For most of aware. for most of these competitions, it is generally just the one interview. But again, you'd need to double check that with public jobs .ie. But for the majority of clerical positions, it is just one interview. Uh, and I see a question, is there accommodation or relocation provided? Uh, no, there's not in relation to this as the vacancies are nationwide, so they're throughout Ireland. Apparently if anyone else has any further questions, if you want to pop them there and if you want to put them in the chat there, we can see if we can, we can, we can see if we can answer them for you. I see a question. So for WPEP, I need to live in Ireland for six months. Yet for WPEP, you have to be in receipt for of a qualifying payment for a six month period before you can apply for that, I'm afraid. There's a question in there regarding submitting the wrong CV. Could they apply again? I, I think from my experience, I think you can go back and amend your application prior to the closure date. Of the competition or certainly you'd be contacting public jobs just to make them aware yeah i i think yeah you'd need to contact public jobs public mm -hmm. jobs double check but i think you can't you, that's why they're telling you to view your completed application after yeah. you've done it so you can make any changes before the closing date yeah yeah question just popped in there when will the when will the job that um, um, if the, um is, would it be in the next couple of months when the interviews are, are done, or it, would it be a, uh, would it be a few months before people would get to start? Uh, we, we there would be no definite start date. It would be dependent on the location and the number of vacancies in that particular location and when they need people. So there's no spe specific start date for these positions as of yet. And the okay. interview, I see yeah. a question: Is it online or offline? Um, at present. Uh, there, as far as I'm aware, public jobs are still doing most interviews online. Yeah, we'll just give it another minute, see if anyone has any other, and, if there's any further questions. Yeah. 
Uh, so salary for this position is um, 51996 per week. I'm not sure if that is gross or net. That's just what's in the information booklet. I would imagine it would be gross and they usually would give the gross figure, but so I can, yeah, you need to check that with public jobs. I'm not 100% sure, but usually they would um, advertise the gross figure. Uh, another question just popped in there. Are there fixed hours for the working day? Uh, it depends on the department. Some some departments have fixed hours and some have what's called flexible working hours. So it's all dependent on the department. For example, within our department, um, the flexible working day is from eight to seven. And if you're in the office, you can uh, clock in between eight and ten and clock out between four and seven and you have to do a kind of a seven hour day. But again, it's dependent on the department you're in and the type of work you're doing. You may have to do, uh, if you're working in the airport or ports, you might be doing uh, unsociable hours. So it's all dependent on the, par the department and the area that you're working in. Okay, there's another, there's another couple of questions there. Um, is it possible to put um, a location preference? Uh, yeah, when you're putting in the location, you put it in an order of preference. OK, and is a PPSN enough uh, for working or do people need an IRP? Uh, I'm not aware what, what's an IRP, sorry. <laughs> I don't know. Um, again, that, I, I, I don't know being on the act. I, I don't know the answer to that, I'm being honest. Um, um, an IRP is an Irish residency permit. I would imagine that a PPSN, if you're Ukrainian, is enough to work. I yeah. think an IRP is needed. No, I think it's just I think uh, they just need her and um I think a copy of their letter saying they have the temporary protection. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And another question there, how many people are uh, are they looking for? The, uh, these roles? We haven't got the numbers from public jobs, but there's lots of vacancies nationwide, so they're looking for a fair few, but we haven't got the exact numbers. You need to contact public jobs directly about that. Um, there's a question uh, a, a question about the WPEP. Um, this person already has experience in the field that they are applying for, but has they have been told by recruiters that they need to have experience within the Irish market. Um, yeah, you'd, you'd need to talk to your uh, employment personnel officer about that in the local entry centre and they'd have to check that out for you to see if you could qualify for WPEP because you already have experience in the field, but you need experience in the Irish market. So you'd best to be talk to your, your employment personal advisor in your local intro centre. And this this might be the same again, same answer, but there's a person here, they've been, um, they uh, were supporting Ukrainians for a, a couple of months after arriving in Ireland and um, doing ver various um, uh, bits and pieces to support them, but they're unsure how, how to describe that um, when applying for a job, how to describe that as experience when applying for a job. Not sure would the EPA's help with um, kind of a CV prep or anything like that? I'm not sure. Kate yeah. or Sharon? Yeah. Sharon speaking here, yes. Um, the employment personal advisors all have received training on career coaching and CV preparation and they would have templates to assist people so absolutely yes um i think in the chat box there i have put in the link for the local intrio offices uh, to contact them directly and ask to see uh, some of their employment personal advisor an appointment can be made and they can go through that process um i see the question is it possible to get a permanent job or only temporary at present this is a competition for temporary clerical officers but there will be at some stage this year another competition for permanent clerical officers so you you can still go for this job and apply for the permanent position when it arises but for, uh, for the time being this is only a temporary position and there's a couple of questions in there again just uh, just asking for clarification about the level of english required they just state the uh, fluency of english and um, temporary staff must have verbal and written fluency in English and Ukrainian. So if you're not sure about your level of English, uh, we'd advise you to apply and public jobs will assess your level of English throughout the application process. Okay, and there's just another person just looking for um, 
to clarify the salary level for the for the role. I think uh, I think Sharon has put down in the chat. Oh, there. sorry, I see that. There, yeah, sorry, yeah. five five one nine ninety six per week. And then is it possible to get a permanent job? Um, yes, um, the, the, the I think that'd be a good example of that. Pretty much, I started off with as PCO and now applied for internal full time. Yeah, so, position, so. I say, yeah, this current position is a temporary position, but there will be the possibility to apply for permanent positions when they arise. But at That's the right. moment, there's no at the moment there's no current competition for permanent clerical officers. But we there will be one at some stage uh, throughout the year. We're just not sure exactly of when that's going to be. And within the department you work, you're assigned to, there may be an internal competition. As Wright has mentioned, he has applied for the permanent clerical officer internally in our department. So, but for the current competition, it's just a temporary role. And uh, sorry, I see a question there about when the interview is going to be. It could be, yeah, it could be soon or it could be a month or two later. We honestly don't know. You'd need to contact public jobs, but they mightn't even have a, a time frame yet of when the interviews are going to be after the application. OK, and I think uh, I just already spoke there about a uh, permanent, uh, permanent position. Um, OK, we'll just give it another minute or so just to see if anyone else has any any further questions. OK, there's a question in there about language. Um, if fluently Ukrainian is required, um, if the person's first language is Russian, is that still OK? Yeah, you can still apply, and as I say, we'd advise you to apply, and then public jobs will assess your le the level of English and Ukrainian and, and see if you satisfy. But we'd still encourage you to apply for this position. I definitely encourage everybody to apply. Yeah, um, and see what happens because many many might be afraid of temporary, but temp there are a few clerical officers here that I met who um, are on temporary contracts for couple of years now and you know it's just been extended until full-time positions come out and they can apply for them you know eventually just get them so it's not like it's going to be a couple of months or something you shouldn't be afraid of that you know it's just start of your journey yeah thanks right and as someone has asked what kind of employee do we think will fit perfectly and there is no uh, no one will fit perfectly this is a very varied role so anyone and everyone can would would uh, be suited to this role. So there's no kind of perfect fit because there's so many different things that you will be doing. So we just advise you to apply and try your best. Yeah, we'll just give it another another minute to give people the chance, give us a chance just to ask any further questions. OK, uh, so I uh, another question might have just come in here now. Um, OK, this person has a four year old daughter with them. Um, are there chances to work full time free school is only three hours a day? OK, well, as we previously mentioned, this is uh, for a full time role. So uh, to see about any other part time opportunities, you'd need to contact public jobs directly to see if there is part time opportunities in this role. Okay, um, a couple more coming in. Coming in here now, so bear me now one second. Okay, and um, this person, I'm a postgraduate student in Griffith part time. Can this person still apply for the, for the role? Yep, so as I just said, yeah, you can still apply, and but if you want to just contact public jobs directly to find out about the hours. OK, and then there's another question about the salary. Is it um, is, is the salary I, stated tax? We're, we're not sure if it's growth. I think Sharon, or, um, Sharon answered that question. Oh, did she earlier? Yeah. On? OK. And I think the, the question is the positions in County Leitrim and specifically nearby Carrick and Shannon. Uh, Leitrim, yeah, is one of the locations. Uh, we it would again, it's dependent on the department that you're assigned to. So we don't know specifically where in Leitrim, er, sorry, in Leitrim. Uh, the vacancies will be, but there is vacancies within the Leitrim area. 
um, and the question came in and um, what about training for this role well, imagine to be to be on the job training I would yeah you yeah you receive uh, on on the job training or and from the training area of the department that you're going to you receive training There's another question about tax there, but Sharon, Sharon answered. So uh, yeah, Sharon answered that question there. Okay, and um, that that appears to be to be all the questions. So um, so thank you very much, everyone. That's that's all for today. I hope you, I hope that all you heard from our speakers has given you a good flavour of the position available and how to register and apply for this job. If you would like to apply for the role mentioned today, please go to www.publicjobs.ie. Remember to apply before the closing date, which is the 16th of March at 3 p.m. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank our speakers and to thank everyone who joined us here today. If you would like any further information, please email us directly at the same email address you used to register for today's webinar. Once again, thank you very much and goodbye.